three for 122. Dean Jones, 41. He's picked up the scoring for Australia since lunch. Alan Border has added only two runs since the interval. And here he is now to face the bowling of Malcolm Marshall. Just waiting for Patrick Patterson to get back to third man. A little bit of frustration coming out there, I think, for Alan Border. Runs not coming too quickly. And I think he decided he wanted to do something about that. Fairly ambitious shot. Just talking about the Cresswell stand having been knocked down, the new building will have seating for 2,000 people. And we have some plans of the new stand that's going to be built here at the Adelaide Oval, provided by the architect David Hassel. A number of corporate boxes will be provided. Uh, they will seat something between 18 to 20 people in the corporate boxes. Box rental is $25,000 per annum. And apparently they've all been taken up. Now that's the first floor plan. Bar areas and food areas, a cafeteria, lower level spectator seating. and a terrace bar so it all sounds pretty comfortable for watching cricket join the game well fielded didn't quite hit it hard as hard as he wanted but Hooper came dashing in to pick it up be 23 uh, of those corporate boxes but because they've been so popular the SACA are looking to add to the number of corporate boxes here at the Adelaide Oval So Border picks up two. And uh, those will be the first runs he's picked up with more than a single in the innings. There is the artist's impression of what that new stand will look like. I must say, uh, David Hassel's time spent at uh, Prince Alfred College was a lot more productive than mine. He was a couple of years behind me. I certainly didn't learn to draw like that while I was at Prince Alfred College. That's what it'll look like from the inside. That's the artist's impression. So the end of the over, it's three for 124. So here's uh, Malcolm Marshall. He'll continue to Dean Jones. Well, yet another no ball from Marshall. The situation in the test match in Perth was the worst for no balls in the series. West Indies had a lot of difficulty there. They've had difficulties uh, over the years. And in that test match uh, out in Perth, 15 no balls in Australia's first innings. Correction, that's the Melbourne test. In Perth, 
even worse than that. 35 counted in Australia's first innings and 37 in the second. And uh, the overall no balls called in that second test were 89 against the West Indies, 50 in all in the first innings and 39 in the second. And uh, with one fast bowler less in the Sydney test and the spinners doing most of the bowling, there were just 18 in the first innings there. At Melbourne 21 in the first innings and six in the second. But already looks as if the Perth figure will be challenged. Perth 50 in the first innings, 39 in the second. We, al we already have 21 here. Coming up to the end of the first hour after lunch in Australia haven't lost a wicket. They lost three in the first session of play before lunch. Kirtley Ambrose was the man who did the damage. He took two for 33 before lunch. And I would imagine that uh, he'll get a, a run straight after drinks. He'll come from the river end, the end that Malcolm Marshall is bowling at now. And that will be another danger period for the Australian batsman. Border and Jones just starting to settle in pretty well. They'll have the breaking concentration with the drinks. And then they'll have to front up to Kirtley Ambrose. By far and away the best of the bowlers so far in this match. Dean Jones really starting to feel very good here. He's flowing into his shots. This is a very good pitch. And confident enough there to go through the line of the ball. You wouldn't exactly have called that one a half folly, hitting through it. And Marshall also appreciates the conditions here. He's off his short and run now. In fact, he was in his first spell with the new ball this morning. put uh, a second man back behind square leg. Gus Logie is at uh, deep backward square. There's also a fine leg. And that's the end of the over from Marco Marshall. So the end of the first hour after lunch, drinks are coming onto the ground. Border is 14, Jones is 42. And Australia, who were three for 90 at lunch, are three for 135. Three for 141, Marsh out for 21, Taylor three, Boone 34. Jones is striking the ball very well now for 47. Border 15, not quite in such good touch, but still hanging in there. Ian Chaplin and Tony Cozy were talking a little earlier about uh, scoring and the different methods of scoring these days compared with many years ago. Well, when I was a kid, that was the sort of setup on a scoring page. It was the unrivaled pocket cricket scoring book. And uh, that was the way it was done. Right in the centre, in uh, that position there, is the total runs. You just tick those off as you go along, and then the rest is just about self-explanatory. The big difference is in uh, the bottom bit where the bowling figures are, they're in boxes, and the eight balls, or however many there might be, there's eight in those days, nowadays six, they are put in there with wickets and no balls, but they're all encased in a little box. Well, that was the old style of scorebook, and then a chap called Roy Weber and one or two others after him started on that method. And we'll come back to that in just a moment. Oh, 
And Roy Weber devised that sort of system so that in a hundred years time, anyone could pick up that page and read the match from it. They could say that umpire Crafter was standing at the end at uh, which he was standing. And umpire McConnell was at the other end. This is in one of the earlier games, not here. That Alderman bowled the over you see on the left and then in a long rectangle is set out what happens during the over. And as you go down the page, it enables you to see that Alderman was the bowler. It was the 32nd over, as far as he was concerned. And just next to him, Hughes, straight after that, bowled his 22nd over. Those were the runs and the no balls, the wickets that um, occurred during that over. There was also a column for the number of balls faced by the batsman each individual batsman. You can see next to Richard's name, balls received. During that over, he'd, uh, he was up to 34 balls received, whereas Richie Richardson, who was playing a long innings, had received 206. Then there's a column for all sorts of notes to say that uh, the 250 came up in 5.41 minutes. And that is the picture of the game, the 84th over at the top there. The score was three for 228. Slower ball from Marshall. The end of Marshall's over, three for 141.